Hi, we're the Vegas. I'm Tony and this is my lovely wife Joan. And we are uh, so thankful that you're taking time to view this video that we've prepared to hopefully uh, just be able to share more of, of the story or the vision that God has given us. We wish that we could be doing this with you in person, but you might understand that distance and time constraints would not allow that. Uh, but if we were doing this in person, we always start off with prayer. Having said that, let me lead us in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to, to be together. Father God, I pray that Tony and I would be clear in sharing the vision that you've given us um, to be missionaries in the Dominican Republic. Father God, uh, I pray for this wonderful person taking the time to view our video. Father, I just pray for an open heart and, and no distractions, um, that your will would come across clearly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Okay, um, I'd like to share with you how God has uh, prepared Tony and I uh, along this route of life to, uh, to be ready to go to the Dominican Republic. Um, many people are wondering, well, how did you get called to, to go there? How did you know? And um, most of you know us, uh, so I'm not going to go all the way back, but uh, most of you know that Tony and I met serving God in the singles ministry. Uh, from that time, we've done a lot of very short-term missions trips, the weekend medical missions trips to the border towns in Mexico. We've been doing that for 10 years now. Yep. Uh, along the way, uh, we decided, well, let's try some short-term missions trips. Uh, we've done some on our own and some together. And through those trips, we knew at some point in the future, probably after Tony retired, that we would be doing longer term, or that we would be doing missions full time. Basically, we started off by making a list of all of um, our skills or expertise or whatever we thought would be useful in the mission field, and um, and prayed some more. And then uh, we decided, well, we need to uh, either eliminate or narrow it down to Dominican Republic. So we called Jim and Teresa, the founders of Sharing a Vision, and ask them, you know, are, are you guys still needing the help that we we saw uh, the need for when we were there? And um, and they confirmed that they did. And so we asked, well, um, what are you looking for in people that would be coming to partner with you? And um, as they listed off all of the qualifications that they needed, it was like they were reading the list that Tony and I had made um, just moments before. So that was confirmation number one. The second thing we needed to know from Jim and Teresa is, did they want us to come and be the ones to help them uh, fill that need? And so we just straight out asked them, would you like us to be the ones that come and help you uh, and partner with you to fulfill the vision? And Jim basically said, when you were here a month ago, we wish that you had never gotten back on the plane. Yes. So, confirmation number two. And that was really exciting to us because Jim and Teresa never really asked us. They didn't want it to be anything that they desired. They totally left it up for God to decide this issue and uh, or this question. And we were very excited to hear that they really wanted us to go there. Now, Sharing Division started 18 years ago. The first uh, eight years of that was in Haiti. And the last 10 years, they've been... Uh, they've been basically ministering in the uh, Dominican Republic in the city of Santiago and uh, <clears throat> they have a great ministry there uh, there's their focus is twofold the first one is to train and disciple and to raise up young men and women to be the future pastors and leaders of the Dominican Republic the second part of that is actually what we're going to be asked to be more involved with and that's to allow short-term teams of young people, mostly college and high school age, to be able to participate in missions. They feel that this is really a, a part of God's plan to reach all of the nations by allowing young people, the next generation, to know what missions is all about and to consider that as part of their future. So with that, God has given us our vision, and that's basically to carry out the Great Commission. And we're doing it very similar to sharing the vision's focus. 
we feel like uh, we're led to be discipling and mentoring the young pastors and church leaders that will be uh, taking up those positions in the Dominican Republic. But also, we're going to be empowering and equipping college and high school age students that are becoming on short-term teams. And uh, that team season actually starts in mid-February and goes all the way through the end of August, pretty much taking advantage of spring breaks and summer vacations that college and high school students get to go through. Quick geography lesson. Dominican Republic is on an island and the island is shared with Haiti and they're in the middle of the Caribbean and uh, they're right in between Cuba and Puerto Rico so that gives you a reference of where we'll be living. Uh, zooming into the country itself uh, you can see a city that's circled called Santiago. Now that's where uh, the ministry sharing the vision is headquartered and that's where uh, where we'll be living uh, <clears throat> pretty soon actually. Sharing Division has a, a very interesting strategy and we really love this strategy. In order to more effectively reach the whole country, uh, they believe that partnering with other ministries is very important. Uh, so they've done that. They partnered with many uh, ministries uh, in the Dominican Republic, all the way down to Santo Domingo where uh, they partnered with many ministries there. All, all along that route, they have ministries that they partner with. And then to the north, near the city of Puerto Plata, they have many ministries that, that we'll be partnering with as well there too. As you can see on the map, Santiago is not that far from Haiti. And we actually partner with, uh, with some ministries that are going on in Haiti as well. We'll get into that in the next slide or two. Okay, I'd like to introduce you to Jim and Teresa White. They are the founders of Sharing the Vision. Um, as Tony said, they spent their first eight years in Haiti and then um, moved to Dominican Republic. These two boys with them um, were left abandoned in Haiti uh, at a hospital and Jim and Teresa fostered them. And now they consider themselves the grandparents to these boys who now live in Austin, Texas. Yes. And this is the team house in Santiago where we'll be receiving teams um, from all of the United States and Canada. Um, it's where they'll be coming to do their short-term missions trips. Tony and I will be hosting um, at night. This is where we'll stay and have meals and things, but most of the time we'll be out in the field. This particular guest house, team house, um, houses 23 people. So we can have a couple of teams at a time. One of the big things that we do um, with teams is building projects and the primary building project right now is finishing the discipleship training center. The discipleship training center called Hacienda Esperanza is very important for the second part of Sharing the Vision's vision which is to disciple Dominican men and women to be the future church leaders. Um, this building in the picture is going to be basically um, the bunks uh, where the young men and women will come and stay. Uh, the second part of the building process is going to be starting in the near future um, where the classroom space will be. They're already working on plumbing and cisterns, um, running water from a cistern up the hill to the cistern down the hill. Another thing that we'll be doing um, with teams is taking them to different churches and neighborhoods to do um, vacation Bible schools and backyard Bible clubs. Um, this particular church is a Haitian church in the Dominican Republic in Santo Domingo, the capital city. Pastor of this particular church is uh, was discipled by sharing the vision and um, they were basically taken under their wings discipled and this pastor over this large church has been very instrumental in, um, in the Haitian community in the Dominican Republic. Okay uh, we mentioned that we have ministry opportunities that we'll be involved with in Haiti uh, this is a picture of an orphanage that uh, we, we plan to, to continue doing work there. Uh, possibly uh, maybe getting into some uh, building projects in Haiti as well. We also take teams to many different orphanages. This particular orphanage is in Santiago and one that we love to go to. It's a special needs orphanage. And um, like this little girl here, they're just very special to us. Uh, this little gal lights up a room with her hugs and her smile and her bright eyes. 
Um, she was left abandoned uh, because of her disability and was taken in by Rosa and her orphanage and has come a long way. She has learned to walk, she has learned to feed herself, and she is just doing amazing through the care of the partnership that we have with uh, Rosa's Orphanage. This young man is also from the, the same orphanage um, with disabilities. He's unable to see, he's unable to communicate, but because of the team's willingness to interact and, and play worship music um, with this young man, he was able to respond in a way that he had not responded before uh, in verbalize, trying to verbalize and, and hum along to the songs and to rock. It was just a beautiful sight. Another ministry that we come alongside is uh, helping the Dominican children to learn English. These are the mountain children that walk for a mile or so to get to this classroom after school to learn English. Believe it or not, by Rosetta Stone being projected on a wall. Um, the, the ministry is very appreciative of the teams as they come and help with crowd control and loving on the kids and helping to learn English. Okay, well, uh, we're back in Santiago again, and uh, this, is our, this is going to be our new church home. It's called the International Christian Church, and we're very excited about being a part of this church. In fact, we were there on a pre-trip visit, and we already feel like this church is, is, is our home. Uh, and the neat thing about this church is the name International Christian Church is not just the name. They truly worship God in four different cultures. There's the Spanish, obviously, for the Dominicans. Uh, there's Creole, because they have many uh, Haitians that are a part of this church. Of course, they have other Americans, so they, they have some of the worship in English. And just recently, they had a family from Brazil move there, so now they even do Portuguese in their worship. And it's really beautiful to just praise and worship God in four different languages, and, and everybody's just like in like in one accord. <laughs> the other thing that we're excited about is we're going to be asked to be a major part of the church. We'll be serving in the church as, as in the capacity of, uh, at, as a minimum, uh, small group leaders. As the church gets larger, we, we probably will be asked to maybe lead that ministry because that's a big part of our, our uh, discipling or discipleship that we've had in training. Uh, but also, we'll be involved in, in, in discipling and, and mentoring some of the people from this church as well. And uh, this picture is, uh, is our favorite picture of all these slides because it illustrates two life change stories that are just incredible to us. I'm going to start with, uh, with Anthony. He's the young man uh, that is holding the mic and looking at, at the young lady. Anthony... Uh, is an he has an interesting story. Uh, if you would have met Anthony 10 years ago, you probably would have not had anything to do with him. Anthony was a very bad person, actually. He was involved in gangs and crime in this barrio called Capotillo. It's, it's in the center of Santo Domingo. This is one of the ministries that we'll be partnering in Santo Domingo. But Anthony was just a very bad person. Uh, I mean, he was in a gang. He wasn't just in a gang. He was one of the gang leaders and uh, one of the kingpins of that gang. But through the grace of God, he reached Anthony, and Anthony turned his life around and started serving the Lord. And, and it's just incredible how Anthony just made a 180-degree turn and, and followed God. But as you can imagine, still living near Capotillo, this barrio, it would have been very easily for Anthony to fall back into the way of life with his former gang friends and, and other friends just kind of enticing him. And, uh, but he didn't. And to make sure of that, Jim White and the Ministry Sharing Division invested in Anthony's life by going down to Santo Domingo up to three or four times a week to mentor and disciple him and it's just an incredible story because Anthony is now a pastor. He's pastoring a church in this barrio of Cabo Dio. And uh, it's just incredible the work that he's doing there for the Lord. Uh, we'll be partnering with that ministry too and hopefully working with Anthony and his lovely wife, Julissa, when we get there as well. The other side of the story is Becca the gal on the right and she is a University of Texas student that came with us on the last trip that we went this past summer. 
Becca admits herself that she led a very protected life um, in Cedar Park, Texas, and um, was not even really, it was out of her comfort zone to even come on the missions trip, uh, much less be in this barrio, this slum that we were heading to. Um, she was fully informed about the street evangelism that we were going to be doing and the type of neighborhood that was going to be, but she cried out to God and um, asked him to strengthen her to be able to do this so that she could come with the team. So basically what it looks like when we bring teams down into the barrio with Anthony is um, Basically, we park a van at the top of the hill, and Anthony leads us down these streets um, of all kinds of filth to uh, basically the belly of the barrio. And um, people will come out, and, and basically we start conversations with them and ask them if they have any prayer requests. And some of those prayer requests are absolutely heartbreaking. Um, we, we lead many, many to the Lord. Uh, it's a very fruitful and productive evening, to say the least. And um, so this particular evening, uh, Tony and I were with some children and leading them to Christ, and I was interested in how Becca was doing. So I looked over, and this girl was on fire. She was no longer the timid Becca that we, that we knew. She was praying um, with anybody she could get her hands on and, and just talking and just very comfortable in, in what God was doing in her at that time. Um, so basically what happens after the, uh, the street evangelism is Anthony leads us back up to the top of the hill where the van's parked. In the meantime, his buddies are setting up uh, for a rap concert. They're setting up the lights and mics and everything. And, um, and Tony Anthony, by the way, is, uh, is a rap singer, uh, pretty notorious in, in the Dominican Republic. Uh, but now he does Christian rap. So in the middle of the streets, in the slums, he's putting on a rap concert. And, and in between sets, um, he and his buddies basically evangelize. They give their story. They tell about Jesus Christ. And during one of these breaks, he asked the University of Texas students if any of them wanted to share their testimony. And lo and behold, Becca, of all people, gets up and grabs the mic, and not only does she give her testimony of um, how she prayed to receive Christ, but more importantly, she, she told how she was delivered from her fears that very night. And um, what a testimony. Tony and I um, had lunch with Becca and her mom a month or so ago. And that girl is still on fire. The boldness um, that the Lord gave her that night continues in her life. It was truly life change for her. And that's why Tony and I are so excited about, um, about serving with sharing the vision. It's the life change that we see in Anthony, the Dominican young man whose life is forever changed because of the discipleship that he received from sharing the vision. Um, we're also very excited about working with college students and high school students as they come for their short-term missions trips and, and watching how their lives are forever changed towards Jesus Christ, towards missions, towards everything. Um, just basic life change that happens due to the short-term trips. And we're very excited to be a part of that. Yes. So basically, uh, just to conclude, um, we, we definitely feel that the Great Commission is, is a big part of, of what God is calling us to do. To go and make disciples, to teach them to obey the Word of God. And at the end of that passage, Jesus himself tells us that he will be with us till the end of time. And we know that this is God's calling, and if he's calling us to this, we know that he will provide everything we need. Now, as you may or may not know, this is a faith-based mission. Uh, in order, uh, in order to, for us to go there, we, uh, we had to sell pretty much everything we owned. We quit our jobs, and we're going there just relying and trusting God that He would provide everything we need. Uh, and this is where you come in, because as 
God has shown us part of how he's going to be providing for us is through partners just like you. And uh, we are very excited that you have this opportunity to hear our story so that uh, potentially you could, uh, you could pray about being a partner with us. Uh, there's several ways you can partner with us. Uh, you can partner with us definitely in prayer. We definitely need prayer all the time. So we'd love to have you as a prayer partner. But we also need financial partners too. Uh, we, are, we are in need of monthly support and your monthly support could help us in a very big way to, to be able to fulfill the vision and the calling that God has given us. And as you know, you're, you're not just partnering with us, you're partnering with God and, uh, and through Him, you'll be, you'll be uh, part of our team. Uh, as much as we're gonna be doing there, you guys are gonna be equally uh, as an important component of the team as we are. So with that, uh, this is some information on how you can partner with us uh, financially. Uh, we have specific needs uh, that, that we're trying to accomplish and we have suggested amounts of how you can partner with us of 50, 75, or $100 a month pledges. Uh, or definitely whatever puts on your heart would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so as you can see, there's information on how you can donate by mail or you can donate online as well. Uh, I think uh, if you do the online, the instructions are pretty straightforward. Uh, on the bottom of, of the screen, you can see our contact information. If you have any problems or questions with donating uh, in either one of those ways, feel free to call us or email us and let us know, and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely try to help you as much as we can. But with the two prayer requests that we've already mentioned, we have one more prayer request. Yes, our third prayer request is that um, we'd ask you to pray to consider joining us down in the Dominican Republic, perhaps on a short-term trip. Um, we welcome families or church groups or even individuals um, to come either stay with us or at Sharing the Vision, uh, the ministry house there. Um, please consider doing a short-term trip, having your life changed forever because of a missions trip. Again, we just thank you for your time and your consideration to be a part of our team. Uh, we definitely want to pray for you as well, so if you have any prayer requests that you'd like to forward to us, we'd love to be praying for yes. you as well. Uh, again, the contact information is on the bottom of the screen. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, God bless you guys, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Bye.